Hello, it's really good to be with you as we go through this season of Advent and think about Jesus and the different names he's called in scripture. I don't know if you were very sporty at school. Um, I was one of those who always wanted to be, uh, liked to play football, liked to be part of things, but probably wasn't very good. And when teams were picked, I don't know how that was for you. They're always the people who are picked first, the people who are picked last. I was sort of in the middle somewhere. But it was always an interesting thing in terms of whose team would you be on? Who would you be with? And if you're quite competitive, like I was, even though I wasn't particularly good, it was really important to have one or two players on your team. There was one kid in particular, also called Mark, but not me, who was a really good footballer. I always used to want to be on his side. I wanted him to be on my side because I knew that his talent, his ability, his skill made up for my lack. That somehow my inability would be covered by his ability. What's that got to do with Advent or anything? Well, the name for Jesus that we're looking at today is Advocate. And it comes from 1 John 2 and verse 1, where John writes, My dear children, I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. Now, the word advocate and what that means, it's all very legal. It's someone who pleads your case in the law. It's like a barrister. And actually, when I was thinking about the law, you know, sometimes it seems to me legal cases, certainly if you believe what you see on the movies, are one not by whether the truth comes out, but how good your lawyer is. I was thinking about this. Jesus is our advocate. What that means, very simply, is that he is on our side. And that our inadequacies, our lack, our fault is covered by his perfection in a not totally different way to my desire to have the other mark on my side when the teams were picked at football at primary school. You see... The most important thing for all of us, though we don't always realise it, is that actually before God, our lives aren't what they ought to be. Now that could crush us, that could destroy us. But the wonderful message of this season is that God has done something about it. He sent Jesus and Jesus comes to be on our side, on your side, on my side. In all the everyday events of life, but even in that most significant moment at all of all, when we stand before God, Jesus is on your side. And his perfection, his sinlessness, if you want to use a theological term, makes up for everything that's wrong in you. So that it's not just about you and your inadequacies and my inadequacies and my shortfalls. It's about the fact that Jesus is good enough. So if you don't feel good enough. If you feel lonely, if you feel like you haven't got enough to offer in life generally, let alone when standing before God, remember this. We have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. Big words, theological language, but it comes down to this. Jesus is on your side. He's on my side in every sphere of life. And ultimately, when we stand before God. Jesus is on your side. That means you're bound to win. And it doesn't get much better than that. Heavenly Father, thank you. You didn't leave us on our own. 
Lord Jesus, thank you that you are on my side. Help us to remember that as we go through this season to give you thanks. Remind us again and again that it doesn't depend upon us or our skill, our perfection, our adequacy, but it all comes down, Lord Jesus, to your absolute adequacy. You are always good enough and that's what counts. And for that, we give you thanks. Amen.